Hi guys, you did it. You made it all the way through. This is session eight, our very last one. Um, for language, everything kind of ties up nice and neat. Pretty little package with a bow. Um, our little ones are all set. They're ready to soar. Um, so let's get right to it. Today we're talking about how to introduce the alphabet. So when we introduce the alphabet, we're gonna do the whole big sweep. We're gonna do letter names, the sounds associated with them, and we're even gonna start blending those sounds so they can hear words and why these letters are so important. We don't want it, the letters just to be abstract, just singing the alphabet. That doesn't hold meaning to them. We want them to know why we're learning these letters. What are they all for? Um, and again, this is why we take our time with things because reading, it will develop kind of when kids are often, sometimes in kindergarten, often not until they're a little older. But in this way, they'll have those foundational skills. It'll all just flow into itself naturally as it's supposed to. Um, so last week we talked about introducing the name and you were able to see how the foundational skills that we've been working on, how they're all in play when we do that. We're doing the same thing now. So I um, offer a suggestion for how to teach the letter, the order for teaching the letters. Um, and I have a link that I put in the course book with a lot of information about why. Um, I think it's important you know the why so you can decide for yourself if it's a good idea for you. Um, it's logical for me. The research I've done, the courses I've taken, everything um, supports this way of doing things, this way I do it in the kindergarten classroom, and I know lots and lots of kindergarten teachers that teach it in this way as well. Um, so it's not the alphabetical order, it's um, a different order, very similar to that found in like Jolly Phonics programs like that. The idea is that you teach letters in such a way that kids are able to make little word families out of them. So the at word family, and there are certain consonants in so the first letters we're teaching are S-A-T-I-P-M. So the word family they might be able to make at. And within that we can make the word sat and pat. Um, there's the word family it, where we can make sit and pet. Um, the word family in, where we can do tin, pin, ip, tip, sip, and pan, tan. Um, so they can start making little words. So we play with those letters, S-A-T-I-P-N, and just like we did with the names, we can introduce them to the sounds. S -s -s -s. Think of words that start with S, and then we're adding in, this is the shape of a S. It's called an S. There's a big S and a little S, and they look very much the same, don't they? One's just a little bit smaller than the other, um, and giving them a chance to play with those shapes. Um, and I'll talk about after um, a few activities that you can do. So like everything we've been doing, nice and slow, really focus on these six. I think they're, they're often groups of six. Sometimes they're a little more. So the first group, focus on those six letters until your, one know, your little one knows that inside and out, no problem. They have those letters down. They've added them to their name letters that they already have. And now they have these letters as well. Fabulous. Um, so the letter sounds, the names, um, things like that. Um, and I talked about how we can make it meaningful to them. Lay down, sweetie. Sorry, my dog's toenails on the floor. I'm not sure if you can hear that. Um, so we've talked about how we can make it meaningful to them is pulling out those the word families. And we can teach it in that way too. We can keep it auditory. We don't need to actually write, write it down for them, but just so they're understanding that, oh, s-a-t, that's an s-a-t. If I take off the s, I can put a p in there, and it will be p and then I'd mean another word, pat. You know what I mean? Like just playing with those sounds with them so they can see the, the meaning behind these letters. They're just not abstract shapes that have names. They hold meaning and they hold a lot of value. So some fun ways to play as they're learning these letters. It's nice and slow. We do the first group once they know them really, really well. Then we do the second group and we practice those letters. We add them into the ones we've done before. We can make new words in our word families. Um, and it just kind of progresses and happens really naturally. Um, so a fun way to practice is doing a back scratch. And I, I'll do this with my little guy. Um, just before he falls asleep, we'll play games where I'll draw a shape on his back or I'll draw a letter on his back and he has to try to guess what that is. Then he draws one on my back and I have to try to guess what it is. Um, bounce the ball and hit a sticky note. So we put on sticky notes, we can put the different letters on, um, on the wall and my little guy will bounce a ball and whatever letter it hits he has to call it what letter that is or we can call it a challenge and say okay let's see who can hit the thus first or who can hit the s first and we use them interchangeably so he knows they're the same thing um 
It's really, well, knowing the sound is far more important than knowing the letter name. The letter name's gonna come with time, but knowing the sound is what we need to read and to write. That's, that's what we need. Um, okay, uh, search for letters as you read. So as you're reading your book, you can, and you're practicing the first rule of letters, you can say, all right, let's try to find the letter S. Which word has a letter S at the beginning? Which word has a letter S at the end? Do any of the words have an S in the middle? So again, tying in to the word awareness and um, beginning letter sounds and all the phonological awareness skills we worked on, we're still tying those in. They still play a role. We don't stop them just because we're here. It just builds on them. So it's natural that they're gonna keep coming up because they're the foundational skills that little ones know and need to do this skill. Um, so that's it. That's how you teach little ones to, um, to know their letters. So I wrote a book, Play Into Reading Readiness, um, and my intent on that book was to teach parents how to teach their little ones to read. And it was so frustrating for me because I was starting with the letters, and I was going to teach in this order, and starting with the name, just like I did session seven and session eight. That was what my book was going to be about. And it was so frustrating for me because I would start writing something and I'd say, ooh, well, that'll only work if you've done this. And working backwards like that. And I thought, you know what? Teaching children to read, it doesn't start with the letters. The foundational skills are all the auditory skills, the phonological awareness skills. Once I realized that, and I wrote the book about the phonological awareness skills, I was able to do a bonus section in the book, which is just a little short se section at the back, section seven and eight, um, where I actually show you how to teach kids to read. Once you have the foundation in place, learning to read is so simple. It's a natural progression. It's the foundational skills that are the critical piece. Um, so yeah, that's it, wrapped up our language, you did it. That's exciting. Um, you've given your little ones this fabulous foundation and they're gonna go to school and soar, and that's amazing. So let's finish up with patterning. Then we're gonna talk about STEM challenges, which is really fun. And then I think it's extracurriculars, yeah. Um, so quickly, patterning. Um, you know patterning, we've just chatted about it a bit through the course. Um, it's an important skill, it grows on, um, it grows in the math curriculum as you get older, skip counting, everything like that, it's patterning. Um, there's growing patterns and shrinking patterns, and we build a lot of patterning in school. So giving them a foundation can just be a simple like A, B, A, B pattern, red, green, red, green. It can be a little more complicated, red, green, green, red, green, green. And we're just teaching them about the stem. So this is the first part of the pattern, and it's going to repeat and repeat and repeat. Um, so yes, you can do, my little ones like to do beading on um, pipe cleaners. We talked about that in fine motor skills, um, using pipe cleaners because they're a little stronger. And so they can make pattern bracelets, red, green, red, green. They can go red, green, green. They can go red, white, orange, black, green, green. It doesn't matter as long as they're able to continually repeat that pattern. Um, it's fabulous to practice with their whole body. So set up the kitchen chairs in such a way that they can go over one chair, under the next, over one chair, under the next. Um, when you're walking to the park, you can do jump, jump, step, jump, jump, step, and just making patterns with your whole body. Um, it gives them that foundation, that understanding that, oh, patterns repeat themselves. Um, yeah, so nice and simple and that those uh, skills wrap up the math curriculum as well. Those are the foundational skills that we're gonna build on in math at school. Um, and your little ones have now had experience with all of them and everything's gonna progress so naturally for them. Uh, the experience, which is always really fun, they're called STEM challenges. Um, often now they're called STEAM challenges. So STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. And when you add in the A for STEAM, it's adding in art and design to that as well. Um, so STEM, I like STEM because it's really just letting little ones get creative. So we have an inventor's bin in our basement, which is actually a water table that became the junk drawer. So we have um, clothespins and popsicle sticks and paper and sticky notes and tape and glue and um, little like clips and those um, name tag things, you know, that you clip on and they pull out so you can scan your name tag in the door. Um, just any cool things that are in the junk drawer, they end up down there in the inventor's bin. So the kids can build with them and create with them. Um, 
And we can also do it in a way that we make it a challenge. So we say to our little one, um, can you drop this marble so we can't hear it when it hits the floor? And then they might, they, they use their own problem solving to come up with a solution for that. So they're getting really creative and they're thinking, maybe they wrap the marble up in a bunch of bunch of Kleenexes and drop it, do you hear it? Maybe they make a big cushion on the floor and drop it, do you hear it? Um, can you make this popsicle stick stand up on its end? Oh my goodness, how are they gonna do that? Maybe they'll use tape on either side to make it stand. Maybe they'll prop it up with different things. Um, just really simple, um, really simple challenges, but little ones love doing it. It really gets their brain thinking and problem solving. It creates all these um, wonderful applications for them to solve these problems and have that success. Oh, I did it, which is fabulous. Um, okay, and the final social skill to consider is doing a drop-off activity or an extracurricular activity. So with my little guys, we often did swimming lessons because for me, that's a safety issue as well. So I wanted them to do that anyways. And sure, I could take them to a pool and we could work on that. But for me, it was kind of um, two birds with one stone. So I would do the drop-off swimming lesson. They would have a chance to be away from me. Another adult would be in charge. There'd be other kids in the class. So there are lots of inexpensive options. Um, like we we have um, community programs here that are very inexpensive. They're five or seven week programs and they're about $30 for the whole session. Um, and so look into that in your area as well because you might have something like that as well. And otherwise just um, one little thing once in a while makes a really big difference. So we would do swimming. Um, my little ones in the summer do soccer or baseball. Um, we keep it nice and simple. They never do more than one thing at a time. I mean, if you want to do more, by all means. Um, but it's just for me a financial. When you have a lot of little ones, it becomes a financial thing. And also we're not big like doers like we're not we don't like to be busy I would much prefer to just be at home I'm a homebody my kids are homebodies my husband's a homebody so we don't want to be out busy doing things all the time so you know we do each of them has something on usually my littlest doesn't have anything on right now but my other two do and you know that's enough doing something two nights a week that's that's enough for us um so yeah, so that's an idea is try to think of maybe, maybe you could do some sort of drop-off program with your little one to get them ready for that separation piece and um, being in a group setting without you there. So that's it. You made it through the whole Play into Kindergarten Readiness course. Well done. Uh, I'm so glad you persevered. You've given your little one the foundational skills that they're going to need. In conclusion, you did it. You made it through the whole course. You have all the skills now in your tool belt, up your sleeve, that you will give your children, your, your child, your children this amazing foundation. So remember, it's not just an eight-week course, of course, <laughs> of course. It's a whole way of living and being with your little ones. So don't worry if your children don't have all these skills before they start kindergarten. Keep playing with them, keep going. Um, even up until grade one, if they don't have them, don't fret, don't worry keep going keep going it doesn't matter how long it takes them to develop these skills as long as they have them the future skills will build on them so like i mentioned when i taught my special education class those children they were 10 11 12 years old once i gave them these foundational skills then they could take off um so never underestimate the role you play the power you have um the ability you have to give your children this amazing future. So you can do it. If you need any help, any support, that's why I'm here. Um, if you're in the community group, uh, our Facebook group, drop me a line, um, send a message, write a question, anything. I'm there to help. I wanna support you through this. Um, I love helping moms. I love working with children. This is what I was born to do. So by all means, shoot me an email. We can set up a phone call, connect with me on Facebook and um, I'm here to help you. So thank you so much for giving your child this gift and this amazing start and for allowing me to support you and help you through it. Um, I will, I'm sure I will see you around. Thank you, bye.